What's up YouTube? Welcome back to a new video. Now last week I did post a poll on Twitter asking for your help. I wanted to know which video I should put out next and the clear winner was for me to talk about my favorite games of 2018 thus far. It's July, I know we're halfway through the year, and if you ask me, this year isn't as strong as far as new releases go. Um, there aren't as many games coming out, which is perfect. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate that because it's giving me time to kind of go back and play some of the games that I missed out on. Um, so in no particular order, I'm just gonna go over rather quickly. I don't wanna spend too much time in this video, but I, I do wanna go over the games that I've enjoyed so far this year that have been released this year the ones that I'm sure will show up on my favorite games of 2018 list so the first one might be a little premature considering the fact that it just came out but it's Octopath Traveler for the Nintendo Switch I'm not too far into the game uh, it was just released last week but um, I really do enjoy Octopath Traveler to be honest with you. It's like a, a throwback. It's a callback to those old retro um, RPGs like from Super Nintendo. It honestly is. Uh, it's a little difficult, but that's okay. But what I love most about Octopath Traveler is how open the game is. To me, it's like an open world RPG. You pick a character in the beginning of the game. There's eight characters. You pick one character um, and each one of the characters have um, specific jobs so they can do specific things while in battle. OK, they're good at, for instance, um, they're good at, you know, uh, provoking people or, you know, one one Teresa, she's a merchant. She's good at, um, you know, bargaining with with uh, NPCs in, in in the town and things of that nature. But what I enjoy most is the fact that the game is open world. So I picked the character off the break and, you know, you kind of go through that character's story. Of course, there's different chapters. But what I like the most about the game is the fact that you have this big world and you can just basically go wherever you want throughout the world and pick up each one of the characters along the way. And each character has their own specific story. I absolutely love that about the game. It's like these eight characters come together for no reason at all, or at least I don't think there's any reason for it. They just happen to meet each other. And I think that's awesome. They're all helping each other. I think that's great. Um, so, and I really enjoy the battle system. The battle system is really good. It has a bravely default feel to it. Um, but what I enjoy most about the battle system is that it's just not like a standard RPG for the most part. You can't just get through these battles um, just pressing A to attack, you know? You can't do that. You actually have to be a little strategic, especially with the boss fights. I, I figured out the boss fights, it's weird because it takes so long to, to uh, defeat bosses in the game, which I appreciate, but I'm just like, man, you know, you know, you make one wrong move and you could be done for. So I'm definitely saving a lot in the game and I'm looking forward to playing more of it. Um, Again, like I said, it might be premature, premature thoughts, but um, I definitely think this could be a game that'll show up in my overall favorite games of 2018 list. Second up is um, Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. I'm currently playing through this game. I am on chapter eight, so I'm almost done with it. Well, at least the story part. I absolutely love this. I'm so happy to see that they're showing the series some love. Honestly, I mean, this is a series that started out on the PS2. Not people, not very many people talked about it, but now I feel like everyone plays Yakuza games, which is fantastic. Um, Yakuza Six has an amazing engine. What I love about it is you don't really see any load times. You know what I'm saying? Compared to let's say something like y Yakuza Zero, the load times weren't like super long, but they were very noticeable. This is all in this game. Like when you walk into a uh, convenience store or whatever, it's just for the most part seamless. I love that about it. It just runs so smoothly. Overall, the story is fantastic. Um, gosh, I keep saying, because this is one of the games that I stream, you know, I'm I'm just like on this game. I'm obsessed with it. And um, I just keep saying this is the, be the best Japanese soap opera game I have ever played. Like, honestly, it's just like full. The story's full of twists and turns. Um, it's crazy. I really enjoy it. I also love the side mission stuff. Um, of course, you have, it's a Yakuza a game. So, of course, you have, you know, karaoke that you can do. You can, you can, um, in this one, there's batting cages. The sub quest or sub 
yeah, subquests, the little side missions, they're great. They have a lot of meaning to them. They're fantastic. You meet a lot of cool characters. But I just think it's really cool um, as far as the narrative goes. It's fantastic. I'm like hooked on it. Uh, and I feel like everyone should play it because it's really good. I'm really looking forward to Kiwami 2. That'll be out later next month. All right, another PS4 game, God of War. I mean, this is this is probably my favorite game so far this year, okay? This is number one so far. Um, I've always enjoyed the God of War games. They've always been fun popcorn action, you know, <clears throat> beat em ups. But I felt like this particular title was, it had a little bit more substance than the other games in this series. Um, I love the combat. The combat was fantastic. Again, this is another this is another game where you can't just mash through. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but you're definitely going to take some damage. You have to be a little strategic with what you're with what you're doing, you know. And um, I appreciate that a lot compared to the other games in this series. I love the fact that Kratos is a dad in this game. So you're seeing a different, you're seeing Kratos in a different light, you know. I mean, yeah, he's still angry, but he's a dad, <laughs> regardless of what some people have to say about his parenting skills. Um, I think it's great to see that father and son bonding, um, those father and son bonding moments. And the story was fantastic as well. And it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful looking game. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't gush enough about this game. I do want to go back and try to platinum it. I'm only missing like five or four or five trophies. Um, and I definitely will do that before the end of the year. But I'm kind of bummed out that they're not putting out any um, story DLC for this game. Um, that would have been amazing. But God of War, I'm sure a lot of you out there love the game as well. But yeah, it's amazing. Another PS4 game. I don't know if you guys could tell us a little trend going on here. I do love my PS4. Um, <clears throat> actually, I love all my consoles. Come on now. Who am I kidding? <laughs> okay. Um, another one that I didn't think that I would enjoy as much. Okay. I don't want to say that I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much because I tend to always enjoy these David, David Cage um, games. But Detroit becomes Become Human. It's... um. It was good. It was really good, actually. Um, this is another game that people seem to have problems with the narrative. They had a problem with the narrative and just the direction in which the story was going and how um, you have this world full of androids that um, basically are revolting against humans for the most part. And they want to feel like humans as well. And uh, there's some parts that kind of... Um, they how do I say this? They they kind of feel a little similar to um, the civil rights movement, and I know a lot of people thought that was in bad taste, but I didn't mind it. I thought it was actually a really good game. I felt connected to Kara or Kara, um, the female android in this game. I loved her story. Um, I also kind of liked Connor's story as well. The police detective or whatever he was um but marcus i didn't like his story as much and he's like the leader of um, this whole revolt but overall the way that each one of these stories um connected i thought that was amazing i really enjoyed that and you know it's a david cage a david cage game so you know there's multiple endings um i i was very comfortable with the ending that i got and how things and how things played out um and i stuck with it you know i mean this is one of those games where you can it's basically like a choose your own adventure okay so you're picking um your decisions you decide on what's going to happen next and uh, i was very confident you know with the decisions that i made and i stuck with them and i like the outcome the overall outcome um but again that's another one of the games that i'll definitely be going back to because um I do want to see a few more of the endings um, that took place just to see how things played out. Because like I said, I was I felt connected to two of the characters in the game. So I wanted to see how things finish out. As far as downloadable games go, um, I can't show you any boxes for these. But there are two downloadable games that I wanted to talk about rather quickly. The first one being Yoku's Island Express, which is fantastic. It's a pinball game or the game mechanic 
mechanics are pinball, but it's a platformer. Metroidvania, I think. It's really fun. It's beautiful. I played it on a Switch. It's pretty much on everything, but it's definitely a game if you're into platformers, if you're into Metroid or Castlevania games, if you're into pinball. I mean, it's pretty much a game that anyone can pick up and play. I found it to be rather charming and I was addicted to it for a bit because I was trying to 100% it. That's how much I loved it. So if you haven't checked that game out, you definitely should. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people are talking about it, but it's one of the games that I could definitely see being kind of high up there on my, my favorite games of 2018 list. And the same could be said for Celeste. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about Celeste because I know a lot of you have probably played that game as well. It's a platformer. Um, think something similar to Super Meat Boy. But if you ask me, I actually appreciate Celeste a lot more than Super Meat Boy. And that's because the, the narrative, I mean, the game actually has a story to it. Um, and while it's not very verbose, uh, it definitely gets its point across. And I don't want to spoil anything. I'm not going to let you know, you know, what happens or anything like that. But that game, I just loved it so much. I know people have gone back and gotten everything in the game and, you know, did all of the levels. I didn't do that. I just beat the game <laughs> because I got frustrated. But it wasn't the kind of frustration where you want to throw your switch at the wall. I, I just, I don't know. I just felt frustrated because I felt like there's no need for it, for things to be this hard. You know, it's one of those platformers where it's boss of the walls hard. And um, I just, I, after I beat it, I was like, uh, I'm done for right now. That's not saying that I won't go back and try to get all of, you know, the tapes because there's collectible tapes and you can do like the B side, the C side, more levels added into the game. Um, but I don't know if I have the patience for that. We'll see. But it's definitely a game that, I absolutely love and adore just because of the story itself. The music is fantastic and it's a beautiful looking game. That's another game that I played on the Switch as well. So those are the games. Those are my favorite games of 2018 thus far. Who knows what's going to come? Well, we do know what's coming out later this year. And I have a pretty good pretty good guess that uh, some of those games or at least one of those one of those games Red Dead Redemption 2 will definitely show up on my favorite games of 2018 um, the overall list but I would love to know what games you guys have completed um, so far this year not even completed what games have you played this year that have been released this year that you definitely think will be on your favorite games of 2018 list at the end of the year. I'd love to know. Let me know in the comment box below. I want to thank all of you for watching this video and I'll check you next time.